Yeah, that's that's absolutely right, and it it, it does, the burden does fall disproportionately on uh, African Americans and Latinos. Uh, almost a quarter of African Americans uh, don't own a car. Uh, about 17% of Latinos don't own a car. The comparable figure for whites is about 7%. So clearly, uh, a public investment program that caters to the automobile also caters uh, uh, largely to white people. So, and that, that, that's a huge problem. So uh, having said that, uh, about 90% uh, um, of commuters uh, drive either alone or with companions uh, to work. Uh, um, so we have a lot of work to do to build up adequate transit uh, share, uh, and that's about public investment. But frankly, it's also about community design, uh, and it's about uh, going out there and letting people know that uh, transit is something that you can take. It's, it's uh, um, affordable, it's reliable, it's convenient, and more and more transit systems need to become competitive uh, against the auto, because that's also what this is about, is competition for uh, 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 commuting, competition for other uh, uses of transportation. When you look at a lot of new housing, and you can see it from the interstate, you know, 300 row houses, 400 row houses, those are places with no bus stops. Right. Well, that, and those are places that, that are a real challenge to serve as well. I mean, the, the point Darren was making about the way we design communities and whether we're paying attention to the transportation choices that those communities are going to afford people is really important. Those places can be very hard and expensive to serve. We have limited resources. So getting a, a, a new program of transportation that really focuses on the connections between land use, between development, and the kinds of transportation systems we're providing, making the investments that enable communities to provide a number of transportation choices is key. And I think you're but absolutely- why are they so hard to serve? Well, the, you know, if you spread a lot of people out, the, the basic premise that makes public transportation work uh, is getting, you know, a number of people in the same place and moving them to, to other places where they all need to go. So having everyone spread out in, in the sort of more typical suburban context is, is more challenging to serve and I think requires, you know, us to also think differently about the way we provide public transportation and the way we meet the, the, uh, the needs of those communities. I mean, a lot of rural communities, in fact, have very serious access, mobility, uh, and opportunity issues that are related to transportation that won't be solved with the addition of another lane uh, to the existing roadway. And, and we'll we're be talking, talking about exactly that later on in the program. Uh, Joshua Shank, this also involves our youngest citizens, doesn't it? Because as, as minority communities suburbanize, as they've been doing in metropolitan areas all around the country, we're also asking eight-year-olds, 12-year-olds, 14-year-olds to spend a lot of time getting around in buses as well. Absolutely. Uh, there's no question. I'm, I, I personally felt this as a child, that I was so constrained by the fact that there was no adequate public transportation, um, and I was completely dependent upon my parents for transportation. It, it was frustrating at the time, and I think it's a, an important experience to provide children with the ability to have freedom uh, to make their own transportation decisions and choices and, and to have mobility at a young age because uh, that's that's really why, how you get people excited about living that lifestyle in the future and how you ensure that we're not going to be a society that's completely dependent on continuously paving over roads um, and burning fossil fuels and that instead we can move towards uh, more walkable uh, communities that are, that are li livable for everybody. Has anything been done in recent years to reflect the growing concern about the need to use less energy. Um, here we are talking about minority communities and transportation and about how a lot of the new building has been looking backwards rather than forwards. It seems just as uh, gasoline intense as it ever was, is it? G gasoline use is, is, is as intense as, as it ever was. Now, now the good news is that for the first time uh, um, since the 1970s, thanks to increasing performance standards for vehicles. Uh, I, in other words, the fuel economy uh, uh, performance improvement program that President Obama put in place, gasoline use is actually predicted to flatline and even decline as we head out to 2030, but not very fast. So we're not moving away from gasoline as quick, quickly as we need to, and we use a lot of gasoline on a daily basis. 
so there's ample room for improvement, and that's why we need to change our transportation program as well and community designs and provide transit access for a whole lot more people.